All right, welcome everyone to this week's Zojo webinar. I'm Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. This webinar this week is going to cover how to use iOS file sharing. And it's going to be a pretty short webinar because I've been rather ill the last few days and my voice is pretty shot. And uh, if this webinar goes too long, I will most definitely lose my voice yet again. And that wouldn't be too interesting. So we'll go through this. Uh, this probably will take maybe 15 minutes. Uh, it's a very easy topic, so it should make for a very easy webinar. Certainly, if you have questions, feel free to ask. So let me see here. All right, so what we're going to be covering is how you can save data in your iOS apps so that you can access the data files from iTunes and conversely be able to send data to your iOS apps from iTunes. So you'll be able to sync files to and from an iOS device using the iTunes app. And all these files are going to have to be in the documents folder uh, of your uh, iOS app in order for iTunes to be able to see them and allow you to add or uh, remove files. Now this is enabled very simply using a plist. Uh, this is the contents of the plist. I will, uh, after the webinar, have a zip file of uh, uh, these slides and the plist and a little example that uses it so that you can uh, see how it all works and be able to use it in your project. But this is uh, the plist. And essentially all you do is you have this, you create this as a, a plist. You call it info.plist. You put this plist XML data in the file and then you just add it to your project. And you can see here the big thing is it has a key that says UI file sharing enabled and that is set to true. And then on the Zojo side, you're just going to drag the plist that has that contents in it into your project. And then from that point forward, anything you save in the documents folder, so that's through uh, zojo.io.specialfolder.documents, anything you save there, no matter what it is, uh, text files, JSON files, databases, whatever, uh, you're going to be able to see in iTunes. And then you just build and install your app just like you normally would. Uh, you don't really have to change anything about how your app is really designed in order to take advantage of this feature. And then once you have you know, the app on your device, you can uh, use iTunes to sync. Now the funniest thing about this is, I don't know about you, but I rarely use iTunes to sync anything. So I actually had to find a, a USB cable, fire up iTunes and run it. I didn't know the last time I've run iTunes. Uh, and then look around for these settings, but uh, works pretty neat. And what it's going to look like in iTunes, and we'll look at uh, what uh, this looks like in Zojo and in iTunes in a minute. But in iTunes, you're just going to click on your device. You're going to choose apps, and uh, you'll see that section there. Uh, and then you uh, got to do a lot of scrolling, depending on how many apps you have on your device. And then eventually, you'll find the file sharing section that will also have a list of apps that support file sharing. And you can find your app. And then when you click on it, it'll show you all the files that are in the Documents folder. And then there, you have the ability to add new files using the Add button there. and uh, Or you can click on a file that's there, and you can save it, and you can save it right off to your computer. So you can access it or do whatever you want. So this allows you, if you add files and then you sync, uh, your device again, those files will get pushed over to the uh, to the device. And if you create new files on the device and you sync again, those new files would appear here for you to grab and put on your computer. So that actually is pretty much it for the steps. So let's look at the uh, uh, iTunes. Now we'll take a quick look at Sojo first here. <clears throat> so here is the uh, Zojo. Excuse me, gotta take a drink. All right, this is the Zojo Notes app that is included uh, with Sojo. And this sample app lets you uh, create notes. Uh, you know, get categories, titles for the notes, descriptions, that sort of thing. And these notes are saved as JSON. And what I did with this app here is I didn't change a single thing in the app. All I did was drag in, you can 
see right here, the info.plist file. That is uh, just a simple file I've created here. And we'll see. Oh, great, it's going to open in Xcode. Uh, so you can see that I didn't really want it to open in Xcode. So let's see if we can open it with uh, something simpler. Uh, let's try TextMate. So you can see a very simple uh, plist file there. And I just dragged that file into the Zojo project. And that's the only change I made to Zojo Notes. I didn't change a, a line of code, nothing changed. The Zojo Notes already saved the JSON file in the documents folder. Uh, so I, you know, I don't have to, to do anything there. And that's the typical place where you're gonna save uh, documents that your apps are gonna create anyway. So uh, I just had to rebuild the app here and install it on my device. And then when I do so, looking here at iTunes, you can see I have my device plugged in. And I can click on the apps section and you can see bajillion apps and screens I have. And I scroll down and I get to the file sharing section and you can see all kinds of apps I have that support file sharing. And then way down at the bottom is the Zojo Notes app. And you can see the JSON thing is right there and I can click on it. And then fortunately there's a annoying amount of scrolling that you have to do to find here. But then I can click the save button here and I can choose to save uh, the notes. And you can see I've already kind of done that. So I'm not gonna bother to do that again. But you can, you can get the files right off your disk that way. And then in this particular case, <clears throat> You can see this is the data file that the iOS app was saving in the documents folder. I will get rid of my notes for the last webinar. All right, so uh, you can see it's just a simple JSON file. And as I used the iOS app and added more things to the JSON file, the next time I synced, everything would show up here. An alternative, if I wanted to add more, if I wanted to manually add notes to this JSON file, I could, you know, just put them in here and then go back to iTunes and replace that file that's in the list there and resync with my device. And that file will get sent over to the device. And then I would have to quit my app and then relaunch it, but then it will reload uh, the JSON file and display the new data. Probably not as useful uh, with a single file like this is you're not likely to go in and necessarily edit the JSON file in that manner. But if your iOS app is saving multiple files, it's possible you may want to create a new, new files that you can uh, add manually in this manner so that they're accessible on uh, the device. And as I mentioned, this doesn't have to be text files. These can be databases, SQLite databases that you can save in this area and then you can pull them out onto your computer so you could look, look at them in a SQLite tool or, or even have a desktop app that does something uh, with the data and you know, whatever you want. But that's, that's pretty much the technique. Like I said, very, very simple. Not a lot to it, but it's not it's like, there's not a checkbox yet in Zojo, so you do have to put this uh, little plist in place. Uh, so let me see here. I got one question from Edwin asking if the folder structure is visible in the docs list in iTunes. I don't know. I haven't uh, tried creating a folder structure to see if this can be visible in iTunes. Looking at the iTunes UI, sure didn't seem like the folder structure is going to be visible there. Uh, it didn't seem like it had any support for a hierarchical list or anything like that. Uh, so it's possible that it's only going to show stuff that's at the root of the documents, but that should be easy enough to uh, try out uh, if you wanted, if you needed that uh, capability. But like I said, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can test it out very easily with any of the built-in apps, uh, sample projects that are included with Zojo. So you could try it with... Uh, here with uh, Zojo Notes, uh, you could easily do it with Eddie's Electronics example. Uh, both of those are saving uh, data. Uh, Eddie's Electronics uses a SQLite database, 
and this is using a, a JSON file. Uh, trying to think offhand if any other ones are saving files. Can't think of any other ones offhand, but doesn't really matter. You just put this plist in, and then boom, everything is accessible. And I mean, that does make it a nice way for your uh, users to be able to back up data if they want. And like I said, if you were designing a companion app that ran on the desktop, this can be uh, maybe an easier way to get that file off of the device onto the desktop so that your companion desktop app could maybe do something with uh, the file. It's a little simpler in that manner. All right, going back, I don't think I had any other slides other than to say, if you have any questions that I can maybe answer before my voice completely gives out. And Jim is asking if any entitlements have to be requested. For this support, no, you don't have to request any entitlements. You just have to uh, put this plist in, which enables that uh, specific setting. Uh, this isn't uh, really enabling any specific feature on the device, which is why I imagine you don't really need any entitlement, uh, because you're already allowed to save things to the Documents folder anyway. This is essentially just enabling iTunes to be able to see what's in that Documents folder and uh, you know get stuff from it and put things in it. <clears throat> All right, so how long did it take me to go through that? Only 12 minutes. <laughs> All right, oh, Edwin has another follow-up question here. He's asking, is it more useful to sync through the internet? Seems like it would be a hassle to sync through iTunes. Uh, advantage would be backing up the data on the phone. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Edwin, that uh, it probably would be um, a hassle to go through iTunes is like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, I at this point hardly ever use iTunes and uh, kind of forget about it. So I, it would be a, a manual task for me to remember to plug the phone into the computer, which I also don't generally do too often unless I'm like, uh, you know, installing apps for testing. So I have to remember to plug the phone into the computer and then I have to fire up iTunes, do a sync there, uh, which again is not something I typically do. And, uh, and then go look in that section in the apps part of iTunes that, I mean, I don't think I've ever looked at before. So, yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. But on the other hand, that's a lot simpler to implement for syncing data than, you know, creating some means to uh, post your data in a more common area uh, on the Internet. But I did talk about you know, a couple months ago the webinar on using web services to do that sort of thing where you have essentially a web service that your um, iPhone or desktop apps can all communicate with. And that can act as kind of a central storage repository for information that can be accessed anywhere. So that certainly is probably a more sophisticated alternative. But this technique being so simple can be handy in a pinch. And uh, so it does have its uses. And uh, James asks, and James is the one that prompted this particular thing because he was asking how to do this on the forum and, uh, and others and uh, suggested it might make a pretty good webinar because people would uh, find this technique useful from certain situations. So thank you, James. I think it, it is pretty neat. Uh, where is the documents folder in the Zojo app? Is it the actual documents folder? Uh, well, in the case of iOS apps, each iOS app has its own documents folder that's associated with the app. Now, where is it isn't important because you don't know where it is. You just have access to it by using special folder. So you'd use uh, zojo.io.specialfolder.documents to get a reference to the location your app can access. Uh, where it is on the device, uh, the specific path is not relevant because uh, it's not like you can access that directly. All right, let me just clear out those questions so I can get the next ones here. Edwin notes that he only synced the iTunes back when computers are made of wood. Exactly. You know, they have wireless sync now. You use iCloud. It's not quite as common as it used to be back in the, the early days. And Edwin is also asking, can you share files between different apps on the phone in this way? No, not really directly. 
Um, I mean, the phone, the apps on the phone can't be shared amongst themselves. I mean, it, this would only give you a, a very rough workaround in that you could have two apps that are using this technique so that in iTunes, you could go to each of the apps, grab the file, then you'd have to save it locally. And then you could go to the other app and then add the file to that app and then resync. So it would allow you to make them available that way, but that's a very manual process. Probably not what you're asking, and certainly doesn't seem like it'd be too practical. Uh, and there may, Edwin's also noting there might be uh, something on the app dev site on how to share documents. Yeah, there is some uh, concepts there of being able to, you can't really share documents, but you can send documents between, uh, between apps. So you can indicate that an app uh, is allowed to handle certain types of documents and then another app uh, can essentially send the document to to a second app that it can get and process uh, that probably would make a good topic for an upcoming webinar as soon as i look into how that is done <clears throat> all right as you can tell i'm talking softer and softer because my voice is completely fading away on me so i want to thank everyone for attending this week's webinar and the next webinar, I think, is the first week of June. And it's going to be the opening up of the Zojo Wars uh, gaming contest that was at XTC to the entire Zojo community. So stay tuned for that. It should be a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.